Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefine Horizons, and in this video I am going to show you how to put together a control tide diagram. So we typically put these on our record of survey maps. Sometimes they'll go on a parcel map. So this is uh, this is how you show other surveyors on your your map how you uh, got onto a control system. So almost everything we do here at Redefine Horizons is done on California state plane coordinates with ties to NGS cores and um, even though we scale the ground uh, we still show ties to cores um, I know some some surveyors aren't gonna like that but <laughs> that's the way <laughs> I think uh, for small projects I like to be in ground but I think there's a lot of advantages to being on state plane coordinates so these are kind of like pseudo state plane coordinates but at any rate uh, we, we show a control diagram and sometimes we work in a city so like City of Tracy requires us to be on actual state plane coordinates grid and you need to show a control diagram on your map. So I wanted to put this video together for my CAD ninja Elena and my other CAD guy Austin, CAD, CAD ninja in training Austin, uh, to show them how you do this. So uh, if you go into uh, Redefine Horizons Templates CAD, we have this uh, little template here, control dot, control ties diagram. Obviously you won't have that if you don't work at Redefine Horizons, but your company may have something similar. And we're going to go drop this in. So we're working on this record survey here in Manteca. It needs a control diagram. So we are going to come and drop that in mapping record survey. So we've got our two sheets here and I'm just going to drop this in. Obviously it might go in a different spot if you're working at a different company. And I am going to throw the date in front of this. And I'm going to just abbreviate the file name. So we have a issue with long file names in OneDrive. So today's date, control diagram, diagram CTD. And we will open that. Okay, so here's what a control diagram looks like. Uh, so we've got this symbol for control points. It's a block. We've got some custom uh, labels here, some just some multi-leaders, and then we've got bearings and distances on our control ties. And what we normally do on ours is we tie to... Uh, so this one's a little different because this was City of Tracy. We had to tie to some city local, local monuments. Normally what we're going to have is we're going to have two or three cores or cores slash PBO stations, so continually operating stations, GPS stations. And then we're going to tie to two or more local monuments. Uh, and I'm going to show you how, I'm going to show you how to do that. So all right, so what you want to do is you want to copy your template over like we did, get it open. Okay, and then what we need to do is we need to import our control points into this drawing so that we can adjust our control diagram to fit our control for this particular survey. And then once that's done, we're going to go ahead and add it to sheet two of our record survey. And I'm going to show you that as well. Now, this only works if your project surveyor, uh, for example, uh, yours truly, Landon Blake, has exported your control points from TBC for you. So hopefully your uh, your land surveyor has done that. Because uh, I don't expect my most of my my uh, beginning CAD techs to, to know how to operate TBC. That's something they learn a little later on in their careers. So you, you, uh, in order to do this CAD text, you, you need this template and you need a control point file, text file. Okay, but I know that I know that I have one for this job because I checked before I started the video. So if you go under the field, where we keep that is in field control. And then you go into our network project for TBC and export. And you can see we've got our control file here. It's always in the same place. So control... TBC network, export, that's where we keep our current control. So what we're going to do is we are going to import that. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go to points, import, points, import, export points, import points. And we are in point northing easting elevation. Your company may use a different format, so just be careful, but we're northing easting here at Redefine Horizons. We're going to go browse to that file. Hang on, my wife is watching TikTok videos and she's laughing in the background. Hey, be quiet. 
You laughed. Alright, sorry about that. That's what happens when you marry to a crazy Latina. Alright, so we're going to go get our control file. So again, field, control, TBC network, export. And we are going to look for a CSV file. We want this one right here. Um, and it probably does not like that I have that open. Hmm. I don't think I have it open in another file. Let's try that other... Let's try this one. No, no. Oh, I know what's wrong. Okay, so let me show you what's wrong. AutoCAD does not like letters in point numbers. Um, so we've got to fix that. So that's why we have this uh, file, copy the file for CAD import. So you see this right here? We can't have this. AutoCAD does not like this. Okay, so I'm going to just give these some uh, point number ranges and I'm going to put the actual name of the cores or PBO in the description. So uh, you have to do this to CAD users because uh, AutoCAD doesn't like alphanumeric point numbers. Okay, so now it should open. So let's try that again. Yeah, it still doesn't like it. Hmm. Something weird's going on. As you can see, I don't script these videos. <laughs> I don't pre pre plan these videos very well. So I'm gonna pause the video and figure out what the issue is. All right, here's the issue, guys. Uh, I had a letter A here, <laughs> so that won't work. I had a little letter A in the point number, and then I'm not sure, but we we may have to get rid of the trailing commas. Um, okay, I may not like those trailing commas where we don't have a description. So let's try that. So we'll try this point import again. Ah, uh, ta-da, that works. All right, and then I always like to just double check this and make sure stuff's in the right format. It is. We'll import that, okay? So uh, here's the control. Here's our local control. And here's our PBO stations, cores, PBOs. Uh, and you can see um, this is Tracy, this is Manteca, so that kind of makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab these and move them down. And... Um, We'll go ahead and get our get our ties in here in a, in a second. Okay, so <clears throat> one thing we need to do is we need to uh, uh, figure out what, what scale we're going to be at. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to pause in this drawing for a minute. And uh, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw a polyline. Between my uh, cores. Okay, because we, we need to figure out what our scale is before we go in and do our drafting because we want to have all these text annotations at the right height. So we're going to go ahead and just save this and we're going to jump in here to our sheet drawing. Okay, and we're going to um, figure out what that scale needs to be. So I'm going to turn on my layout grid, turn off my baseline grid, but leave my layout grid on. And then I've got a layer here that we're going to use, layout lines, viewport boundary. And uh, there's my wife laughing again, sorry. And then we're going to go ahead and draw our viewport in here. Hey! The girl's driving me bonkers. I don't charge extra for her laughter in the background. Alright. Okay, so now we've got our viewport boundary in. Okay, so we want our control diagram to basically fit in here. Okay, so uh, we're going to make this viewport active. Oh, what did I do? Did I do a polyline? Yeah, I did a polyline. Sorry guys, let me redo that. So, you actually want to... I should have used the mview command and not the polyline command. Alright, so... We'll redraw this. 
freeze these layers. Okay, now we've got a viewport. Okay, but the problem is we we need to uh, xref that uh, control diagram into our sheet drawing. So we're going to make a new layer. We're going to call it xref control diagram. Okay, and we're going to make that blue. And we're going to make it current. And we'll go insert that drawing. Oh, sorry, don't want to insert. Let's try XREF. You guys might not be able to see that. It's on the other screen, sorry. This is just the XREF dialog. I'm going to go XREF in that control diagram drawing. The nice thing, too, about having this as a separate drawing is if you have another work product, you can just XREF it in. So that's one of the reasons I do it that way. Okay, and we're going to just drop this in at 0, 0, scale of 1. Okay, so there it is. So now we can set the scale of this viewport. So I'm going to just start with the zoom extents. And what you want to do, this is going to be big because those PBOs are a long ways apart. So we're going to say zoom 1 over... Uh, I'm going to try... Uh, 20,000. And it's having a hard time there. One over. Okay, so that, that doesn't quite work. Right? Uh, so if we did one over 30,000. Okay, that fits. Pretty close to fits. Uh, but the problem is... If I, if I go this big, uh, I'm not going to be able to see my other points. Okay, so we're going to cheat. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in where I can see my local points. Okay, I'm going to go a little closer. So I'll try 1 over 2000 XP. Okay, and I'm not going to show all these local points. Okay. Okay, so I like 1 over 1,000. Looks pretty good. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're, we're going to have to break our, our tie. We're going to have to fake in our ties to our PBOs, which I'll show you here in a minute. Okay, so let's go back to our control diagram. And uh, here's, what, here's what we're going to end up doing. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this now. So let's go ahead and we want to see these point labels. So we're going to say BKF control on those, so now I can see my point numbers. Okay, and what I want is a couple local points, uh, but because this is a boundary survey, what I really want is a couple local boundary points. I don't want um, I don't want it to actually show our control, so we're going to we're going to tie the PBO directly to the boundary points, and um, I know. This 1517 is a boundary point, and um, I'm not sure if I have another boundary point here, so, so let, let me go check. Okay guys, so I got this boundary drawing open. Because this, is a, this isn't a topo, it's a boundary, we want our local points to be boundary points, uh, you know, prop, found property corner monuments, and so uh, I want to go ahead and steal some of those out of my boundary drawing. So you can see these are our control, uh, but those points may not necessarily be permanent, but I do have some found monuments here. Okay, so I've got one here, and uh, I've got uh, one here. That's pretty close, though. I'd like to get these a little farther apart. Um, I like this one up here. So I like this 126 and 1503. So, uh... I don't know if this is going to work. I'm going to try and just copy these. So we'll say edit, copy, and then let's see if we can get them in. Yeah, AutoCAD doesn't like it, but we're going to try it. We're going to see if we can get them in here. Okay, there's 1503. And it doesn't.
doesn't look like I got 126. Here's what you can do. You can run zoom to point. Type in your number. Yeah. It's saying it doesn't have 126, so let's try and grab it. And for some reason it's not wanting to copy this point, and I don't know why. Alright, so I'm going to delete these points because we don't need them. Okay, and uh, we want to go ahead and put in that point 126. So because I can't get the point to copy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw me up. I'm going to just draw a line between these points. see if we can get the line to copy over. Okay, so we did. We got the line to copy over. Okay, so my other point, this is going to, this is that point 126. So I got uh, 1503 and point 126. Okay, so those are going to be my two local points. And so here's what we're going to do. This is set up for a 1 to 300, and we set our sheet up to be uh, 1 to, uh, one to what do we decide we're going to be? I think it's 1 to 1,000. Um, so we gotta we got to make that change. So what that means is we've got to be, just double check this. So this is set up for 1 to 300, we're going to be 1 to 1,000, so we got to figure out what that scale factor is. So let's just pull up our calculator here. Okay, so we got 1,000 divided by 300. So we got to scale by 3.333, and I'll tell you the easy way to do that is uh, to just grab this whole thing and scale. Okay, so this text is now basically 100 close which is what we want all right so let's let's get these these two looks like they got exploded which is not what we want but all right so So let's get rid of these because they got exploded. So we'll have to fix that in our template, won't we? Okay, so these are multi-liters, which is what I want. So we're going to set the scale here to a thousand. Okay, and then um, I like my landing distance to be a tenth. I like my height to be a tenth. And my arrowhead size I like to be a tenth as well. Okay, so now that we're, we're set at the right scale, we can start to move things over. So we're going to have these two symbols here. Okay, we actually don't need this point in here once we have the line. Okay, so I'm going to bring this to the top the front. Okay, we want to match our line type. Okay, that's a control line. Okay, then we're gonna um, we got to fix up our multi-liter. That gap still that's too big of a gap there. So that is uh, where's our gap landing gap right here? I like to be 0 0.05 usually. Okay, so now we can copy over our multi-liter. And you remember this was 0.126, so we try and stick with the same numbers. That doesn't always happen. We'll have to double check the map, but I'm going to call that in 126, and then 
This is, uh, looks like we shot it as 103. Okay, so this should be M103. Just check our descriptions on those. So M103 was a three quarter inch iron pipe with a plastic cap LS8159. So we're going to say down three quarter inch iron pipe with yellow plastic cap stamp. LS8189. Okay, and then we want to get the northing and easting. Okay. And there's a couple ways to do that. I'm just going to drop a point in here at the end of my line. We can copy these values. Okay, and we'll double check these against the actual points in the boundary drawing when we're all done. Okay, obviously we don't need that many zeros. Decimal. Um, and you can see we got some commas in here. I like that. It makes it look a little nicer. Okay, let's go back and get our easting. Again, we don't need all those places behind the decimal. So we'll round that to the nearest hundred, throw in some commas there. Okay, and then this monument was a three quarter inch iron pipe, no tag. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to create a little temporary point there. We can pull that northern and easting out of. Around these, throw some commas in. Okay, and then we got to get the easting. Now, I will also tell you that you can. What I'm doing here, you can also do with the with the custom point label style in AutoCAD Civil 3D um, and, and it saves you some of this effort so and maybe I'll do another short video that shows you how to set up those styles but uh, for now we're just we're just going to get this done okay now we need to, to tie out to our cores okay so I'm actually going to grab this line here So these are the ties to the cores that we need. And I just try and do, you know, what's logical there on the connections. delete this stuff that we don't need from the old diagram and then we got one more line to do here so this line is going to actually run between these PBOs okay all right now I'm not going to put that symbol on and you're going to see why in a minute but um, I do want to label these bearings and distances, and I want to flatten these lines before I do that. So let's just correct. you got to remember those lines are going to be 3D because we're putting them on actual points. So let's flatten those. <coughs> you 
should always save before you do that, by the way, because it'll blow up your AutoCAD. I should have warned you guys about that. Oh, and I, it just messed up my... So let's try that again. Let me save it. And we'll try to flatten again. Do I want to remove hidden lines? The answer is no. Alright, so there you go. I'm not sure why this... So the, I'm going to say select similar. Uh, these should all have their line type set to by layer. Alright, so now they're all going to have that tie line line type. Okay, now we're going to throw some fairness and distances on here. And then and then I'm going to show you... we gotta, we got to cheat on this a little bit. So we're going to show you how to cheat. Okay, so... Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to go to lines and curves, add line and curve labels. We're going to say multiple segment. Oop, I actually want to pull up my dialog. So we're going to pull up our dialog, and we're going to say we want bearing and distance level 1. Okay, and we're going to say, oh, sorry, this should be multiple segment. Bearing and distance level 1 is what we want, and we're going to go ahead and add them. Now they're on these big lines, they're just really small, but they're there, okay? And that's important, I'm going to explain why in a minute. So, okay, now this is the part where we cheat. So this is set up to be real life, right? But it's obviously very hard to see this um, in that viewport we have on our sheet. Um, and we can just, I'll, we'll just update our XREF so you can see that. So we're going to reload that XREF. And you can see if we... If we went out, if we if we showed that, if we zoomed out enough, in fact, we can just do it, just a zoom extents, uh, that's obviously not workable, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to leave it at this 1 to 1,000 scale, and we're going to fake in our ties to our course, <clears throat> okay? And uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. So what we're going to do, we're going to come over here, and uh, we're going to copy this whole shebang. Uh, and this is why I don't use the automated point labels, because as soon as you move this with automated point labels, uh, this those the coordinate values are going to change. That's why we just do it with multiliters. Okay, so now I've got a copy. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fake in these ties to my cores, and I show you how I'm going to show you my trick to do that. So what I'm going to do. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to run the change space command, this is in my sheet drawing. And I'm going to uh, put that into... Uh, oh, that's my viewport. So let's draw... We're going to just draw a rectangle on top of our viewport. Because you can't do it with the actual viewport. We're going to run change space. And So what we just did there in our sheet drawing is we put this footprint into model space, our viewport boundary, or footprint. So I'm going to uh, cut that, and we're going to come over here to our uh, control diagram, and I'm going to paste in that footprint, paste original, okay, which is now down here, right, and that's okay. Now we're going to move it using that, uh, that uh, local point as a anchor, okay, and so what, what this does is I've got to get my ties to my cores to fit in this rectangle. Okay, and we actually have a layer for this. Um, we call that our, our uh, viewport footprint. So I'm going to go ahead and so we call it layout uh, lines uh, viewport footprint. And that is a non-plottable layer that I'm going to make blue. Okay, so we actually have a layer for these footprints. They're handy for, for a lot of different stuff. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just trim these lines out um, around my edge of my box. Okay. And uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to uh, offset my box 
a little bit. So let's try uh, 400. Okay, and I'm actually going to trim to that. Okay, because that's going to leave us room for our symbols. Okay, so now I'm going to get my symbols. I'm going to bring those to the front. Okay, and so I'm going to copy these. So we got a tie to a cores over here and a cores over here. Now, over here they go to the same cores, which is roughly in the middle, right? So we're going to fake these in. Now, as soon as I move these lines like this, uh, these bearings and distances are no good anymore, okay? Um, but that's all right, because we've, we've got a trick we're going to use there. So what I'm going to do now with these bearings and distances is I'm going to explode them. Okay, and on these two, the bearings are good, but the distances are wrong. Okay, so we're going to go see what should those distances be. That's why we leave, we leave this true to scale or real life diagram in. So this first one is 142740.27. So 142740.27. So 142 740.27. 142740, I just want to check that. 142740. 142740 looks good. Then this other line down here is uh, 170, 170710.51. 170710.51. One seventy seven ten point five one, and we're going to throw our commas in there. Okay, now I wish that this would have put the bearing after the distance, so I'm going to just go ahead and move it using my near snap, and I'm just going to get some spacing that I think looks good. And then, whoop, then I'm going to slide these back up the line here. Okay. Okay, then we got to, um, we also have to, uh, I believe these, these bearings are now wrong. So we've got to edit the bearings and the distances on these and on this one. So we got to add a line. We're going to add our tie here. And we're going to match the properties. Let's check our line type scale. It's 1,000. Nope. How about 1? There we go. Alright, so uh, let's write these down and then we will uh, edit them. So you got helps to have a little. Uh, you know what we can do? We can use Notepad. We don't have to write them down. Okay. So we've got um, our top bearing is uh, south seventy five twelve zero zero east six five comma seven zero one point four seven. Then we've got north seventy five. 3858 west, which is southeast. And we've got uh, 65, comma, 796.26. Okay, and then our third one that we need over here between these PBOs. is, uh, I'm going to do this northeast, so north, 52, 35, 37, east, 66, 627.21. Okay, so now we've got those. I just pulled that off my monitor, uh, on my other monitor, so you guys can't see it, but 
Now we can go ahead and edit these. So we're going to explode them one more time so they're editable. So we've got Sal, 75, 12, zero, 0, East, and our distance is 65, comma, 701.47. And this one kind of did the same thing. So let me show you a, a trick. I'm going to just copy this down. Copy these down. Uh, actually, let me do this. Let me add that label again. I don't know why it's doing that. Yeah, yeah it's just weird that it's putting that, it's flopping these two, but anyways, we'll explode, explode one more time, and I'll slide this over, just using my nearest snap. Okay, so our distance on this one is... Six five comma seven nine six point two six feet and our bearing is south seventy five thirty eight fifty eight east so those two are done. I just realized these are uh, these labels are too small. They should be uh, 100, which means they're going to overlap. Yeah. Uh, well, that just stinks. So let's. Uh, and here's why, because I don't have this set to one to a thousand. So let's do that. So make sure when you create your labels, you have them at the right scale. That you don't—you're not a dummy like me. So we'll set that scale up. Okay, then we're going to set that scale, and then we're going to go ahead and add that label here. Okay, then we'll explode it. Okay, now while I still have it as a block like that, I'm going to make a copy of it because we're going to use it to replace our other labels. Then I'll explode it one more time. Okay, so we are going to add this. So this is 66,000 feet. And this is going to be north, 52. 35, 37, east, okay. and I actually, uh, I don't like that that line's due north when that bearing's north 52, um, so what I'm going to do, is I'm going to draw a line here, just because I'm slightly anal, let's try it this way, ah. So this isn't going to be to scale, but I'd like it to be reasonable. Uh, let's see, we want to do line by bearing here, and we want quadrant one, 52.3537, and I'm just going to draw it out like that. Alright, so now it's on the actual bearing, so I can move this down. So here's a handy command called T orient. Grab your text. Oh. And then grab two points. 
Okay, and then it's gonna Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna make these middle center justify. Okay, and then we're gonna offset this hundred feet, which is a tenth. And then we can just snap to those midpoints. Okay. So and actually once you've done that, this might not have gone on the midpoint. Once you've done that, you can then use these text entities just copy them down to your next midpoint here okay and then we'll run that to orient okay run that same offset move these to the middle Midpoint. And we'll just edit these values. So I was a dummy. If I'd had my scale right, I wouldn't have to do this when I created my labels, but I was a dummy. This is going to look nicer, anyways. I'm actually going to make this southeast. All right, and I don't want you guys to have to watch me do the rest of these labels. So what I'm going to do after I finish this one is I'm going to pause this. I'm going to finish the other labels, and then uh, then I'll unpause it, and uh, we'll get this dropped in our sheet. Okay, guys, so I got those labels cleaned up. Now they're at the right text height. You can see they're consistent with the M liters. So we got our uh, bearing and distance labels on there, but what we need to do now is we need to create our point labels for our cores. So we're going to just copy those. And I might have to adjust these a little bit to get everything to fit here. Okay, so then we got to go say we got to figure out what are those cores actually named. Yeah. All right, so this one. Oh. I'm looking for my description here. That's P two fifty six. P230. So we got P256. Okay, and our description here is going to be NGS cores. Okay, because it's an active station, it's, there's no physical monument. Okay, and we'll come back and do our northern and easting. This is P230. 
Same thing, NGS cores. And we will update our northing and easting. And then this one. I don't know why, for some reason, I lost that point. I don't know why I lost it. So let's go see what was in our point file. So that would be NGS Core C mod. I can see from the point file. So this is uh, CMOD. It is also an NGS cores. Whoop. Okay, and I don't like to hand type coordinates when I don't have to. <laughs> so I'm going to just open this file up. And uh, we'll, put it, we'll put them in using that uh, text file. Okay, so I'm going to just move this off the screen. You guys won't be able to see it, but it's there. So CMOD, I'm just going to copy the northing and easting here. And we'll put in our commas. And do a little rounding. Do the same thing for our easting here. And uh, you need to double check all this, right? Like this will all get checked. This will get a peer review. Okay, so that one's done. Then uh, P256. We'll do the same thing. You're just copying these northing and easting values right out of the point file. Don't need the elevations because this isn't a topo survey or control survey. It's a boundary survey. And we're not showing any elevations. So that's not necessary. One more, P230, Alright, so I think this thing's done. Now, I'm going to leave the, the true scale version in here. And over here I've got my not to scale version, right? Let's make sure our line types are going to work. Yeah, I don't know why my line types aren't working. That's weird. Let's try to flatten these again. Had to flatten them again, and then you want to make sure you grab these symbols and bring them all to the front. Okay, so this is a nice looking control diagram. You know, I'm proud of this. This looks good. I don't know why this one didn't come to the front. Okay, so we're going to save that now, and uh, we're going to come over here to our record survey, and uh, this should just update if we reload our XREF. Okay. Now you got to remember we're still zoomed in on the real life one, so we're going to back out of that and we're going to come over here to the not to scale one we made, and we're going to use the align space command. Okay, I'm going to pick these two points on my box, which will correspond to these two points in paper space. That gets put in at exactly the right scale. Okay, so this looks good. Okay, then there's only a couple other things I like to do, so we are going to copy this. Turn on our layout grid so we can get that text in the right spot. So 
So I'm going to put it right here. And we're going to call this Survey Control Diagram. Okay, then the other thing we need here is uh, we need a north arrow and uh, we need to indicate that this is not to scale. So let's save that for a second. So we've got this little, uh, this is a, I don't know what to call it, it's, a, it's our little uh, hybrid north arrow <laughs> for details not to scale so I can just copy this out of my first sheet come over drop this in obviously it needs to get scaled up so I'm gonna try by 10 that looks pretty good to me okay, save that come back into our record of survey sheet number two in this case And we'll reload that XREF. Boom, there we go. North not to scale. Right, looks good. And we have a control diagram in our record survey. Now, I want to point out a couple things. Obviously, that was a lot of hand editing of text. And I know I've got haters out there that are going to say, why don't you just use di dynamic bearing and distance labels and a dynamic point label, and you don't have to go through all that drama. The only way that I know of to do that is you have to do two separate diagrams. You got to do one that tie your cores, PBOs, to your local point, and then you have to have a separate diagram that shows your ties in between your local point. I don't want to do two control diagrams like that, um, so this is the way I, I do it. I just kind of hack it and hand draw it so that I can have a single control diagram. You know, the only way to show these two local points at a scale reasonable with with ties to your PBOs is to have this thing be not to scale, right? But I think this conveys all the information that I want it to convey, and you know, for you know, I can whip that up in 45 minutes or less, and uh, you've got a really nice looking uh, control diagram. You know, you do have to make sure you double check these coordinate values and bearings and distances. You have to double check those to make sure you don't have any typos. But um, but I, I think it works well. Um, you can try and do this with just dynamic labels at true scale, but it, it's harder to do. Okay, and uh, I'd love comments in, uh, if, you, if you've got another hack that will work, you're welcome to leave me comments. Um, I'm more than willing to, to consider that, consider alternatives. Okay, the other thing I will point out is that uh, when you do something like this, you need to make sure that you have a note that, at least in California, that uh, includes the other information that you need about a California state plane coordinates. So if you, if you use... If you show state plane coordinates like this in California, you're really supposed to include some information. So let's go ahead and do that because we're really we're really not done until that's complete. So I'm going to go ahead and copy some note text. And uh, I'm going to just put it down here by my control diagram because I think that's a good spot for it. Okay, and I'm going to say... Uh, Note on the use of state plane coordinates. Okay, and I'm going to say distances shown on this boundary survey are ground distances, not grid distances. And I'm going to say distances and coordinates shown in the control diagram to the left are in our grid coordinates and grid distances California state plane coordinates zone 3 and it's epic date 2010 83 per NGS cores. Okay. Then we got to put in the required information. So we're going to say um, the combined scale 
factor for this survey is XXXX. We're going to go get, and we're going to say the CSF was calculated at point XXX. This point has an elevation of XXX mapping angle at point XXX is XXX. Okay? So those three pieces of information are required if you're going to show state plane coordinates on a survey. You got to have the combined scale factor, the point where you calculated the combined scale factor, the elevation of the point, and the mapping angle at that point. So let me show you at my company where you go and get that information. So we have the scale factor report that we run that we get out of TBC. And it has that information, okay, right here. Okay, now, <clears throat> I don't want to use it at one of the cores because those are too far away, okay. So what I want is I want a local point. Okay, so I'm going to uh, pull up on my boundary drawing real quick. Alright, so I don't think I have either of my local points uh, in here. So what you got to do is you actually got to calculate that scale factor from TBC. I wish I would have had one of those. I don't think this one's in there either. Yeah, I just don't have it in there. So uh, we're going to calculate a scale factor. I'm not going to make you watch that though. So let me just show you an, an example of what this would use, what this would look like. Okay, so we'd say the scale factor for this survey is 0 0.9999329972. Scale factor was calculated at point, which point do I want to use? I want to use one of my local points, so we're going to say M103. Okay, and that point has an elevation of 202.76. And the mapping angle at point M103, and since I say M103, I don't have to say point, at M103 is, and it's going to be positive, 0, 1, no, I'm sorry, it's negative, negative, 0, 0, percent, percent D, 40 minutes, 35 seconds, okay? That's what your node is going to look like. That has the information required by the Public Resources Code in California. If you're in a different state, make sure you understand the requirements for your state. Okay, so now we have our control diagram and we have the information required by the state. I just let everybody know, hey, the boundary survey shows ground distances, but this control diagram shows ties uh, that are in grid. So these are grid bearings and grid distances. And if you're a survey, surveyor, another surveyor, you know what you're doing. Um, even if you can't find my control or you can't find uh, the monuments on my survey, in theory, if you tie back into these core stations um, and, and set some local control, you ought to be able to stake out my boundary corners and get within a tenth or two, which is, which is pretty powerful. That's why I like to put my, uh, one of the reasons I like to put my survey on state plane. Okay, this video is way long. It's almost an hour, but uh, let me show you one other thing I noticed. I don't, I don't really like how this sticks out. Uh, my text, I like it to fit within these cells. So I'm actually going to adjust this. I'm going to move that down too. Okay, so I can pull this text down so that it fits inside the, the line, the, the cells there. And um, obviously when I do that, uh, I just chopped off my north arrow. So we'll have to move down our north arrow. I'm also
also going to move down this text. All right. So I did, that's just a little layout thing. I wanted to make sure that my text saw. Uh, we want to we want to make sure that this uh, survey control diagram fits within these cells. I don't want this little piece of text hanging up. So they do that now. So that's uh, that's what I want. The other thing I kind of don't like about this is we got this weird two inch gap here, so this text doesn't line up with this text. So uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll move it over here so that it lines up, and then right here, instead of saying to the left, I'm gonna say to the right. Okay. So now this text lines up. That's just a little layout thing. Uh, now we got a beautiful map with a nice control diagram, right? Which is what we wanted. So I'm gonna save those changes. Uh, man, if you sat in here for that whole hour video, you're awesome. Uh, but that, now you know how to do a control diagram on state plane coordinates. So I appreciate you watching, guys.